Hello everyone, happy Sabbath. Um, we are going to actually um, hit that subscribe button on your way in, by the way. Um, again, this is the Open VR TV. And I'm gonna start with, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna go on a journey with the book of Proverbs. We're not gonna be Russian. I'm gonna study, I'm gonna try to study. And as I'm studying, I'm hoping that you guys are also studying with me. Uh, I don't know yet, so I'm just right now reading the book. Well, I, mean, I already read the book, but now I'm actually going to study it. So as I'm actually reading the chapter or the verses, we are going to go and learn something new. Today we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 1, and we're going to be doing the first seven verses. I'm going to try to keep it more, no, no more than 15 minutes, hopefully. So, let's get into it. Proverbs chapter 1, uh, it says the beginning of knowledge, you know. So, first thing first, the word Proverbs. What does the word proverb mean? Well, to those who don't know, the word proverb basically means parable. So, the word proverb is, means parable. So, basically, when we hear about Jesus speaking in parables, and people are like, oh, he's speaking a new language, well, even King Solomon was already speaking in parables. So the whole book is basically called the book of parables. So um, the basically the parables of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Verse 2. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom and justice and judgment and equity, so, to know wisdom, what is wisdom? Um, basically, wisdom, and we're going to be looking at the word as we are actually studying right now. The word wisdom basically means skills or, um, yeah, basically skills. Like skills. So, when you are in a, yes, you know, instruction comes into, the, into it. But when you start getting more experience, you're getting more skills, you become wiser. So wisdom, to, to have wisdom, you have to have skills or skill set. That's why people who spent 5, 10, 15 years in, in, a, in a subject, they become expert, they become wise in that subject. Instruction, what is instruction? I think that's what I was trying to say. Instruction, basically, as you know, is instruction, but it also means discipline, chastening, and correction. So for instance... Uh, yeah, okay, discipline, chastening, correction, punishment. So, basically, when you are instructing your, let's say, your children, you don't just say, okay, here are the rules, and this is how you do this, this is how you do that. But you also correct them if they did it wrong, right? So, when you, are, when you correct your child, so when the Bible says in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, um, Every 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 scripture is um, God breath and is and is um, useful to teach to instruct and correct and all of that. That's instruction. So instruction you can also teach, but you also need to discipline, correct certain bad behaviors, or maybe approve certain good behaviors, so the person can become better. So to know wisdom meaning to have to have to basically have skills and instruction to be to know what it means to be corrected or reproved or disciplined to perceive the words of understanding. Now what is okay of course to perceive means to discern, you know, discerning. Understanding. What is understanding? Understanding basically means you know consideration, uh discernment. So the difference between uh, wisdom and understanding is understanding you you basically are you basically have the wisdom but you have the discernment of what's going on so when somebody understands certain things it means they can discern it even if it's they are um, wise in it but if they see a pattern oh I discern this pattern I discern that right here so understanding basically means you can discern certain things so to 
to perceive the words of understanding, to receive instruction of wisdom, and we already looked at what instruction means and wisdom. So basically now you are receiving instruction of wisdom, which means you are learning it from, you are being basically corrected or instructed or uh, taught by or, or disciplined by those that actually know that are better in that subject and so now they are passing that knowledge to you so you are basically receiving the instruction from them meaning from their skills uh to receive instruction of wisdom justice and judgment and equity justice um, that's something we failed in this country so many times justice means righteousness accurate fair and we know so many times recently there was a lady whose name was caroline do, um, Durham Bryant who just passed away and she made a first allegation on a 14 year old that was like back in 1955 Emmett Till and then they killed him and she actually never got the justice for what she did so justice basically means to do the right thing accurate and fair and judgment we know what judgment is mean judgment is basically judgment you know arrangement cases charges, decision, and all that. And equity. Equity means what? Equity means evenness, uprightness. So it's not the same equity as um, when, when you guys know in accounting, you know, um, that asset is equal, uh, that, that asset liability and equity. No, not that part. But, so to receive the judge and such of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity means you need to become a an upright person who exercises great discernment and fair towards people, you know, to give subtlety, subtlety to the simple, verse 4, to the young men, knowledge and discretion. Okay, subtlety. Sometimes it might look like it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it basically means, you. well, it basically means prudence, you know, you're being careful, in a sense, prudence, craftiness. Sometimes I look at it as in a bad way, you know. But when 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 is it bad? Well, before I get there, what is the simple? Simple basically means open-minded, you know. So most people that are open-minded are mostly children. That's why Jesus said, only children are gonna get to heaven, in a sense of. If you're not open-minded about the gospel, then you won't be there. So to give subtlety to the to the simple or to the open-minded, meaning you are opening their eyes to what is right for their time and that is good. But of course, people can also use subtlety to do wickedness with it. So for instance, when they are trying to to teach or indoctrinate children when it comes to sexual stuff that are not into their age range. You know, um, most schools now are trying to push in that LGBT agenda to the children, which is inappropriate for their age because they try to they try to protect children for everything but that part. They want to mutilate children at a young age and put them on hormone therapy, which is basically bad. So that is another subtlety there to the simple minded or to the open minded, but it's in the wrong way. So it can be in a good way or the wrong way. To the young men, knowledge and discretion. Of course, the young man, we know what the young man is, is a lad or boy. Knowledge, we already know what knowledge is. Basically, it's knowledge. Discretion. So discretion basically is a, oh, of course, purpose and discretion, intense plan and all that. So basically, you wanna you wanna give subtlety to the simple. You wanna um, give the open-minded people prudence to, and the, you wanna you, you wanna give knowledge to the young men and discretion so they can understand what's going on. You know, a wise man will heal and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain to wise counsels. Okay, that should be very simple. A wise man will hear. So what what it means? When you are um, 
teaching, correcting, and disciplining a person, that person that is um, wise, meaning the person who is open-minded, he's going to become wise in that area. It could be wise in the good way or in the bad way. But of course, you know, the Bible is talking about the good way. And the, that person will increase, I mean, they will learn more because they were open to know what the truth actually is. And the man of understanding is loving. The man who has the ability to discern right and wrong, he will actually get more wise counsel because they're gonna, he's going to be surrounded with people who only think of good things. And therefore, by associating himself with these people, he's going to have even wiser thoughts. To understand a proverb and basically mean to understand a parable and the interpretation, the word, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. So, all of that, meaning the the wisdom and instruction to perceive words of understanding, to know what's right and wrong, to to give justice and to be fair and have and to be upright and all of this is going, is going to help that person basically to understand proverbs, to under an interpretation. For instance, the more you walk with God, the more it's going to give you the ability to understand um, riddles, parables, and their interpretation. Joseph was one of them when there were many riddles and he actually solved them. Look at Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and God gave him the interpretation through Daniel. So the more you are with God, the more it's going to open your eyes to discern what's actually happening so you can give an answer to the people that are actually asking you. Okay? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So the word fear... It's not about being afraid. Let's see what it means. It means what? Oh, awesome. Now, it says also, also fear, but it also means reverence. Yes, I know you can feel as being afraid, but when God asks us to feel Him, it's not to be afraid of Him because He doesn't want, like God says, His plans for us are not plans to hurt us, but to do good. So it's not asking us to be afraid of Him. But that doesn't mean you should disrespect him. You know, many of us actually fear our parents, not because we're afraid of them, but because we respect them. Even right now, when they get old, we could, if we were afraid of them, we wouldn't want them to live in our houses, right? But because we know we're out of respect for them, they stay with us so we can take care of them. So God is asking us to respect not to be afraid of him. So the fear or the reverence of the Lord or the respect of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So the more you want to love God and respect him and want to be with him, the more you're going to become wiser. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Why? Because the Bible says in Psalm chapter 27 verse 1, no, chapter 14 verse 1, that... Um, the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. I think it was Psalm chapter 14. Yes, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So that means if the person is a fool, then he cannot receive instruction or wisdom because fools don't like to listen to anything. So, yes, that's actually the first part because we're gonna the next part is a different part is a different um, area so for right now we can we're looking at those verses and like I said I am reading right now and as I am reading it I'm also studying it I mean I already read it before but I'm now I'm studying it so that you guys can actually study with me as I'm actually going through the the chapters so you can understand what the book of Proverbs basically is about 
and maybe God's gonna open our eyes to some of the riddles and the, the difficulties in our lives that we actually have a hard time understanding and what's actually happening in our society today. Guys, uh, I'm very happy to start this new journey with you. Um, basically, and the, basically, this is actually the book of Proverbs, that was chapter 1, uh, from verse 1 through verse 6. And again, it was um, the Open World TV. I'm hoping to see you guys every, I hope, every Friday night or every Sabbath, every Sabbath for for the rest of the, for the remainder of this book. Again, food for thought.